Hey there, it's Dawn Marie again, and welcome back to Life's Necessities and Luxuries. And today I'm going to cover another necessity, which is a really fun dish. It's an Italian sauce that we're going to do with some Italian-style crushed tomatoes. I'm going to do pork meatballs instead of beef meatballs. And we're going to need some seasoned breadcrumbs. I really like 4C a lot because they really are, I find that they're the best that I've, as far as taste-wise. And an egg and some onion and garlic. So get about four cloves of garlic. I like medium-sized garlic. Ooh, as it goes flying around. And I get a large onion, which we're only going to use half that onion because I'm going to use the other half for another dish that we're going to make in the next video. So let's get started. Okay, so now it's time to make the meatballs. Actually, what I like to do normally is do beef, pork, and some veal, but since I'm doing this on a budget to see where we go, this is what we do. So take about a pound of the meat. You're going to take one egg at room temperature, crack it, throw it in, until I start to really mix it around with the egg to see how moist it is. I don't want it really dry, but I don't want it very moist either. So you can just keep mixing it with your hands. It's a little bit messy, but it's also kind of fun at the same time. Just think of it like playing with clay. And you keep adding some more breadcrumbs to it until you find the right consistency. Once you got them to that everything is mixed really well, I start to roll out the meatball. I make my meatballs a little bit on the smaller size because I want them to cook through. Sometimes when they're too large, they don't always get cooked into the uh, sauce after I cook them on the stove, but I just want to make sure that they're cooked and nobody gets sick. So I make them a little bit smaller. What you do is you just take some and you start rolling it in your hand. And I do them about this size. So I do that until the whole thing is done. And I can start to put them into the pan to fry them. I'm going to turn them on all sides until they get nice and brown. And then I'm going to make the sauce and throw them into the sauce. And you want to give them a little bit of room between each other because you're going to have to turn them around. So don't clutter them too close together when you put them in the frying pan. Okay, so now it's time to turn the meatballs. Just give them a nice little turn. Make sure that they're not burning, that they're getting nice and golden brown on each side. You just kind of flip them around and do all sides until you see that you've got some golden color on each side of the meatball because it is still going to cook in the sauce so you should be fine now so that they look like that okay and you want to get rid of any of the pink coloring that you see in the meatball and then they're going to cook again as I mentioned in the sauce so that's going to cook probably for about another hour or two under simmer so let's move on what I normally do put in there is some pecorino grated cheese which um, I did not put in there today, but the seasonings from the breadcrumbs should make it taste flavorful enough so that you really don't feel like you're missing it. But if you do have it, throw some in, about a quarter cup. Okay, so I line a bowl with some paper towels because I want them to drain a bit before I throw them into the, um, into the sauce. Because I am going to take a little bit of the oil that they've been cooking in and throw that into the sauce to give it some more flavor. And so that's it for the meatballs. And now we're going to move on to the sauce. I just start making the sauce. I take about a cup of onion. And I'm going to have those mashed garlic. I let my pan get too hot, so I'm taking it off the heat for a moment because I don't want it to burn. I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil, which I already put around two tablespoons or three tablespoons of olive oil in there so that they don't stick and burn. Put it on a medium-low heat. 
and wait till they start to get a little translucent. I, I keep consistently stir this. And then I don't want to put my garlic in until they start to get translucent because I don't want my garlic to burn. And then we're going to take it out of this frying pan and we're going to put it into the stock pan here to cook up with the sauce itself. So they're getting nice and translucent. Takes about a, two minutes, depends on the size of your onion, but I used a very, like almost like a fine chop, but yet it's not minced, but it's small chopped pieces of onion in here. Because I don't want somebody biting into a chunk of onion in the sauce, you know, that's just not a good taste. Now, I've used about three large cloves of garlic here. And again, you want to consistently keep turning so that the garlic doesn't burn because if you don't, if you got all it burns, you're going to have to toss it and start all over again. Nothing worse than burnt garlic. It tastes horrible. And you want to get that to a translucent, mixed in well with those onions. Sometimes I only do it for less than a minute. I want it to get heated through enough so that it gets flavored in that onion, but it does not burn. Okay, so now it's time to put the onion and garlic into just about a little bit of oil there. You're going to turn up your heat to medium-high. You're going to throw in your onions from the frying pan into the stock pot that you're going to cook your sauce in. Don't waste any onions, get them all in there because the more flavor the better in this sauce. Now this is the Italian style sauce that you hear, you know, that you get in your restaurants and things like that. Now I am not using fresh herbs today, I do not have them, so we're going to go with dried herbs. I take a can of Italian style crushed tomatoes and a can of water. You just fill up this can of water. Now, I would normally put a can of tomato paste in here, but I do not have that either, so we're going to cook it without it. I don't mind it so much, but certain people do. Um, I put in about a tablespoon of oregano, dried oregano, and I put in about three tablespoons of the basil. And I also add in some red pepper flakes because I like my sauce a little bit spicy. Okay, so I've added the can of water and now I'm going to insert the meatballs into the sauce. And I had reserved a tablespoon of the oil from the meatballs that were cooked in the pan and threw it in there as well. And now I'm going to let it cook on low medium heat. Mix it really well. And I'm going to keep stirring this. Every few minutes I'm going to come by and take a look and stir because you don't want it to get burnt on the top. Sometimes it gets very thick at the bottom or it, gets, you know, it just gets nasty. So you have to keep stirring it. And we're going to let that cook up for another two hours. And your sauce will look like this as you're cooking it. Alright, so remember you're going to keep stirring it, but if you notice it's getting much thicker now. And it needs about another hour. It's been on for an hour now. And I threw in some of the hot sausage. I just sliced it up and threw it in there. I had an extra link from another dish that I'm working on. Okay, so the sauce is really thickened up now. You see, it's like nice and thick. So, even without the tomato paste, it still got pretty thick and it'll be fine when it goes over the pasta. So now it's time to make your pasta. Okay, so I take a pot of water, put some salt and a little bit of olive oil in there just so that to keep the spaghetti from sticking to one another while it's cooking. Bring it to a boil and then throw in your pasta. I've been using gluten-free spaghetti now because I've been getting more sensitivity to it. So this store brand is actually a lot cheaper than the regular brand, which was about $2.40. This was about $1.65. Now, I cut my spaghetti in half and throw it in because I'm using a smaller pot, but if you use it in a regular 
Dutch pot, then you can keep them in one piece. Um, plus, it gives you a little extra. You want to boil this. Now, this is the gluten-free, which I usually boil it. I believe it's like 12 minutes until it gets soft. Once it does, then you just strain it in a colander, and then you'll place your sauce and meat over the pasta. I've strained it. I put a little bit of olive oil on top of it just to keep it from sticking, and I mix it through thoroughly so that it's ready to get plated. I just kind of give it a stir through so that it combines the olive oil throughout the pasta. So there you have it. I took a little spoon of sauce with a couple of meatballs. I put four because they're small meatballs. It's basically like two meatballs that are larger. And there you have it. I sprinkled some grated cheese over the top. I used Pecorino Romana. And you are ready to eat. Mangia comunice, as they say in Italy. Ciao, Bella.